Spring is here. The sun is shining. Time to dust off the old RV for a new season of adventure. Wait, what's that noise? There's something wrong with the engine. No, wait, that's the sound of stolen catalytic converter. At some point over the last six months during the long Canadian winter, somebody broke into my RV storage yard and took my catalytic converter, or CAT for short. I mean, RVs are the perfect target. High clearance, easy to get underneath, and nobody checks on them for months. And the price of precious metals inside of them is higher than ever. But man, was I angry. I felt violated. What kind of person would do so much damage to someone else's stuff just to gain a few bucks? I mean, the cost to fix this is way more than what this 20-year-old cat's worth anyways, not to mention the hassle. Oh, I wanted to do some pretty horrible things to this despicable lowlife, to put it nicely. Anyways, I'd thought about ignoring environmental regulations and just patching my exhaust system with a straight pipe. That would have been easy enough and much cheaper than the deductible I had to pay to claim insurance, but that wouldn't have been the proper fix. So I brought it to a reputable shop and they put in a new one for me. So now I have the same question as anyone who's ever had anything bad happen to them. How do I prevent this from happening again? I mean, it's so shiny. If it was stolen again, a sketchy mechanic could just sell it as a brand new one. So I googled how to prevent catalytic converter theft. The number one answer was park in a garage, which was obviously a no-go for my class A motorhome. Some people etched the VIN number of the vehicle onto the cat. I feel like maybe that's helpful if the police ever find it in a big bust, but I don't think a thief is really going to notice that in the dark before he steals it. They also make these gimmicky alarms, but honestly I don't think that'll do anything in a big unattended RV storage lot. There are also ways to create a physical cage around the cat. You can get someone to weld a big steel box around it or buy a contraption called a cat clamp to mount around it. But that's 500 bucks, which is the same as the deductible I'd have to pay if it got stolen again. I'd also explored just piling a ton of junk under my RV so that the cat would be impossible to access. But that would also make it hard for me to actually use my RV. So putting all my research together, I devised a plan that seemed reasonable to me in terms of cost, effort and convenience. First, I used this Dremel-like spin saw attachment to etch my VIN number onto the cat. I put it in two places. Not sure how effective it will be, but it was pretty easy to do. Next, I spray painted it with this bright red high temperature brake caliper paint. The colorful paint supposedly makes it harder for a thief to sell. Bright green or neon pink spray paint would probably have been better, but I couldn't find any high temperature versions of it in my local hardware store. Then, from my winch project, the link is in the description if you're interested, I had this big roll of steel cable kicking around in the garage, so I thought I'd improvise my own version of the cat clamp. To attach the wire to the exhaust pipe, I got two of these $5 exhaust pipe clamps and welded six big nuts onto each of them. Now, I'll mention here that when you weld things like big nuts that are galvanized or zinc plated, you need to polish off all the zinc first. Otherwise, it'll contaminate the weld. But I didn't feel like polishing my nuts and this isn't really structural, so I just welded them straight on. You can see that after welding, there's a bunch of white powder everywhere. This is zinc oxide, just like the stuff that I used to put on my kids when they were babies, when they had rash on their nuts. But if you don't wear a respirator and inhale this stuff, you're in for some bad aches and nausea. I speak from experience. It's also called metal fume fever, or the zinc shakes. Anyways, after welding, I sprayed the clamps down with the same high temperature red paint to protect them from rust. At the RV, I first mounted the two clamps on either side of the cat. Then I fished the steel cable through the clamps, looping it around parts of my RV frame. In hindsight, I'm a little concerned that a thief might just cut my RV frame and destroy the entire RV. but. Cutting a structural frame while underneath it is also unwise. Finally, I put a bunch of U-clips on it to make sure that there's no way anyone can sneak the cat out from the wire cage. 
I use some high temperature red thread locker on all of the nuts just to make sure that everything is really hard to take off. Finally, cutting the cable. Not easy, which is good. And so there it is, my custom low budget catalytic converter theft deterrent system. I know it's not really thief proof, but really, there's no guaranteed way of stopping a determined criminal with the right tools. Anyways, I was pretty satisfied with it. I thought this thing screamed, leave me alone. In fact, I thought this thing looked kind of beautiful. But as I stared at it, it started looking more and more to me like a heart. A red heart that was bound up in chains. And then it struck me. This red catalytic converter was in fact a reflection of my own heart. I had become so obsessed with protecting this new cat from being stolen that I couldn't see it for what it actually was. Inanimate. This RV, the cat on it, all the things that I possess, it's just stuff. Here today, gone tomorrow. So why am I holding on to it so tightly, desperately asserting to the world that it is mine for all eternity? Did I make a prison out of my own possessions, trapping myself in my own anger and entitlement? Yes, my cat was stolen, and it was a lot of work to get it fixed. But somewhere out there, there's a man or a woman with issues enough to resort to vandalism and theft for a few bucks. Issues that I know nothing about. Is not a human life worth so much more than a car part with some precious metals in it? Did my mission to protect my own stuff snuff out my concern for the brokenness of humanity? And so, with a deep sigh, I unclenched my fists and asked the Maker to have mercy on this soul. Anyways, who knows how long I'll have with my family to enjoy this RV. Spring is here, so time to stop worrying and be glad.